want to share a quick story of compassion with you. Um, I'm reading this book by this priest who started Homeboy Industries. Um, my good friend Chrissy Hardy actually recommended me to read this book, and it's absolutely just amazing. It's a you're just full of laughter and tears all in the same paragraphs. It's just wild. Uh, but basically, in the late 80s, this guy started this ministry to help rehab gangbangers fresh out of prison and off the streets and out of the projects. Um, it's very, very touching. The, the heart this guy has is unreal. One of the stories is about this young man who, uh, he was in a detention facility for a year and a half. Went to this camp and found new life. Um, he, he went to this detention camp for about, uh, for, um, uh, uh, vandalizing. So he was a product of his upbringing. No mom, no dad, raised by gangbangers. If you hand a child a binky, what are they gonna do? They're gonna suck on it, you try to take it away, they're gonna cry. Do you hand a kid a gun, what's gonna happen? You're gonna hand a kid a heroin needle, what's gonna happen? You know what I'm saying? They said they're a product of their upbringing. And this young man, there's something different about him. And he shows up at the priest's office um, and he's got this whole new light and he goes, look, Look at my report card that I got while I was in camp. Straight A's. And so the priest opens it up all fast and he sees two C's, two B's in an A. He goes, okay, close enough. Yeah, good job, straight A's. But either way, this boy just made an impression on this priest's heart. He would just rest his arms on the desk and his hands on his chin and just stare at the priest. 12 years old, just a little guy with, with already this hardened criminal background. And the priest says, you know what? If you were my son, I'd be the proudest dad in the whole world. And the little boy's eyes welled up, his pawns, trying to hold his thumbs on his eyes so the tears wouldn't fold over and the tears just hit the table. And he just started wailing. It was the first time he ever felt love like that and compassion. And he left that office that day and his chin was up and his chest was out. And he felt like a million bucks. He felt like he had this new life that he was gonna live. He was leaving his old past behind. He was a new creation. The priest gave him that love and that confidence and that heart of the father. While on his walk home, some gangbangers drove by and they shot him. priest was heartbroken. He was mad. And he was full of hate. And he wanted the wrath of God on the boys that shot him. But there was a problem. The priest also knew the shooters. And he knew that not only did he have to have compassion for the killed, but he had to have compassion for the killers. Because they were also just products of what they were brought up into. They were also just project kids with dysfunctional families, heroin addicts, abusers. Those were the same kids that were handed the gun when they were kids. And the same kids that were broken and empty and looking for validation and community and they found it in the game. They found friendship and love inside of a gang that said, hey, if you go out and do this thing, we'll love you more. So they didn't think about the outcome. All they were thinking about was love me. The number one most spoken quiet prayer in every single person is love me. There's so many times where we meet someone that we we look up to and we say in our minds, in our hearts, oh, like me, love me. Let me tell you, let me profess to you how cool I am or what I can do. Give me some sort of worth. Give me some sort of words that validate your acceptance of me. And I personally have had a brother that was murdered. And I've had to go through the same thoughts wanting revenge for him, 
or just looking at him as a broken child of God that didn't know what he was doing. It's a tough thing, but God will give us the strength. His compassion is big enough to love everybody. He can cover everybody with his compassion and love. I feel like in this day, in this, this age, we need bigger hearts. We need heart surgery. And we can't do it by ourselves. We gotta lay ourselves down at the feet of Jesus, who is the God of all comfort. The love that we feel was given to us through his creation and his image of who he is. We have a God who is love. All things out of love. Love doesn't keep any records of wrongs. I just want to share this message to maybe touch someone out there that's got a hard heart right now. And maybe it's rightfully so. Maybe your heart is just bruised and broken. and Maybe you feel shame and disgrace and betrayal. I just want to encourage you that you can get over it. All things are possible with God. That's why I'm so passionate about the Lord. I'm not open-minded to science or anything else because I know the power of God's love. I've seen it. I've witnessed it. I've seen miracles. God is real. God is loving. He is with us. He goes before us. He will make a way. Whatever you're going through right now, He will make a way. I promise you, just keep just a steadfast love, a pursuit for purity, a pursuit for good, a pursuit for God, and in all things, love him, love others, and love yourself. Thanks for watching.